Hi, I'm Marshall. I'm the owner of Going Gear, and I'm here in our store in Smyrna, Georgia. This is the extended review of the Nightcore TM03. All right, here we are with the new Nightcore TM03, part of their Tiny Monster series. The world's most powerful 118650 tactical flashlight. I don't know how true that is, but it is pretty bright, especially for a 118650 flashlight. 2800 lumens on max output, 289 meters of beam distance. So 2800 lumens, 289 meters. As you'll see when we go outside, this is a pretty floody light. Using a Cree XHP 70 LED, which is a massive LED, especially for a light this size. Max runtime of 30 hours on the low output, max intensity of 21,000 candela, impact resistance 1.5 meters, and then waterproof to 2 meters. That's all the information that's on here. They have some pretty simple packaging for their TM series. You know, there's not a bunch of fancy graphics or anything like that. But if you want the full specs, here they are. And you can always go to our site, goinggear.com, to get the rest. Let's go ahead and open it up and show you what you get on the inside. Here is the user manual. Nightcore actually does a really, really good job on their user manuals. They're well written. You can tell that they have a native English speaker help them out with them or just completely write them for them. Because they're always well done. They've got a ton of information. you got the ANSI specs. So you got 2,800 lumens, 1,350 lumens, 550 lumens, and then 40 on the low. Put that away. But yeah, definitely worth a read. Always good information in there, and they do a good job on them. Let's take the light itself out and then show you some of the other stuff that you get in here. So here is the holster. Oh, one note real quick. On the 2,800 lumens, uh, they don't call it out. Some other manufacturers do but it is going to step down. It's going to get hot. This is a relatively small light putting out a whole lot of lumens, 2,800 lumens on max output. It is gonna step down, so just keep that in mind. If you run it constantly, it's not gonna get the 2,800 uh, for the entire time. You know, maybe they actually do call it out. Let me see. I don't see where they do. <laughs> so we're gonna go with them not calling out how long it'll run on 2,800 lumens. But usually it's either a temperature or time thing, so just keep that in mind that it is going to drop if you use it in the constant output. If you just keep on trying to run it in the 2800 lumens, it's gonna drop after a little while. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and open up the holster. We'll slide the light in and uh, show you what that looks like. So pretty nice holster, nice, sturdy, rigid one. Got a little bit of rigidity to it. It's not super rigid, but enough to protect the light and enough to keep it in place. You've got an attachment point on the back, got that uh, the hook and loop, and then you've got the slot there. You can slide through your belt. D-ring attachment point if you want to happen to use that. And then other stuff that you get, stuff get falling all over you. Uh, you get a spare O-ring and it looks like that's it. No lanyard, no cables or anything like that. This doesn't have built-in charging. It does have a battery, but you have to pull it out to charge. So just keep that in mind that you will need to pull it out to charge because this thing does not have built-in charging anywhere on it. So there's that LED down there. You know, we've had several customers ask us, why does it have a blue lens? It does not. I don't know why they did this on this light, but they put a piece of blue plastic to cover it. And this is a brand new one that I'm using for the review. So we're gonna slide that off and uh, take a look at the LED down in there. Let's zoom in a little bit. As you can see that big guy. Cree XHP 70 LED. So big old, big old LED, especially compared to, uh, well, I've got a, MH20 right here, and you can see just the size difference in those two LEDs. So you got the X, uh, XML2 on the MH20 and then the XHP70 on the TM03. So a really big size difference, you know, not nearly that much of a size difference between the reflectors. Obviously, the TM03 has a larger reflector, but compared to the LED to reflector ratio on this, this is going to give it a more floody beam just because that LED is just so large. Uh, so let's go set that back down. Focus back on that. And then you had the orange peel reflector on there that you'll see when we go outside. It does help smooth the beam out quite a bit. But nice styling on this. You got a bunch of surface area that they put on here just to help dissipate that heat because it is putting a serious amount of heat off. Uh, two switches there on the end. You've got the main switch and then you've got the mode switch. And it does come with the battery. And this is a proprietary battery. And we are going to have spares. You can get them from us at goinggear.com. But just keep in mind, I've tried several other batteries in here. And uh, most of them don't make it get to the max output. I'm not sure why that is. I think it may be because it uses both of these connections at the same time on the top. You know, a lot of times we'll see proprietary batteries like this where it uses the, the positive and negative on one end for charging. But, 
you know, obviously got the negative on this end, but there is no charging in this. So I'm assuming that they have the positive and negative on the top uh, for some reason to get it to that max turbo 2800 lumens. I don't know. Maybe somebody can let me know in the comments. Uh, a little bit more information about that. Or if you guys know of any other compatible batteries, it'll get it to that max output of the 2800 lumens. Because this is an IMR battery. Uh, and it's one of their proprietary ones, and that's how you're getting to that max output in combination with that big old LED. Uh, so Tiny Monster TM03, got that engraved, got Nightcore, nightcore.com on the other side. You know, something that I don't mention a lot of times is just the basic information about flashlights like this. Like what you get when you buy a high-end flashlight, you know, you don't get some $5 piece of junk off of Amazon or eBay. When you buy a nice flashlight, the kind of stuff that you get, one of the big things is Type 3 hard anodizing. I talked about this in several other videos. And one of the nice things that Type 3 hard anodizing does is when you run a knife across it or you run some sharp objects across it, you can see a lot of times if you're doing this on the cheaper, crappier lights with the uh, not as good anodizing, that would have just scratched it all up. A hardened steel blade would have just scratched that all up. And of course, if I just gouged into this thing, if I put some pressure on it, aluminum is a relatively soft metal and it would scratch, but it's a lot more scratch resistant. So you have this light and it protects it and just keeps it looking nice for a longer period of time. You got the stainless steel bezel on there, so that helps protect you from impact. Also, you got a little bit of crenulations. I'm sure they say you can use it as an impact weapon. Never done that myself, but it has that ability. And then you've got a big old head, decent amount of weight to this thing, so you got a really thick battery tube in there. And uh, you got impact rating, you've got dust resistance and water rating. So this thing is rated to IPX8, which basically means you can dunk it in a puddle or dunk it in some water, leave it in there for a little while, and it'll be okay. Don't go diving with it. Rain and stuff like that is fine, but that's what IPX8 means for the most part. And then uh, the drop rating, you know, you drop it from holding it basically out in your hand and it'll be okay. You know, don't chuck it at a concrete wall. That'll probably give it some damage. I don't know. This light is pretty big and burly and tough. Maybe uh, somebody a little bit braver than me will do an abuse test on this, or maybe I will be brave <laughs> later on and do a video on that because this thing has some seriously thick walls, a big chunky head. I bet this thing could take a whole lot of abuse. So XHP70 LED 2800 lumens on max output, all controlled by these two side switches. There's a couple modes in there. They have one that is, uh, what do they call it? They call it suppression, suppression light or suppressing light or something like that. Uh, yeah, suppressing light mode and then strobe ready mode. So I forget what I have it in now. I was messing with it before I started shooting the video, but it looks like I've got it in nothing because I don't have the tail cap tightened all the way. Tighten the tail cap when you first get it. So just have it in, in uh, you know, tightened all the way down just so it has a connection and it'll actually turn on. And that's another thing to note. This thing, you can lock it out super easily. Just loosen the tail cap a little bit and that'll keep the light from turning on. You know, people always ask about electronic lockouts and can you do things with switches? And yeah, a lot of lights have that. I find it way, way more effective and way, way more useful just to loosen the tail cap a little bit and you have a better peace of mind because, you know, if the tail cap uh, or the side switch lockout is press and hold for three seconds or something like that, how do you know it's not gonna do that in your bag when you have it locked out? Just loosen the tail cap, you know, it getting a tighter tail cap. I've never had that happen in my experience. And I take lights like this, you know, 50 at a time to trade shows. I've never had a tail cap tighten on its own. You've got a decent amount of force you got to put on that. So just loosen the tail cap if you want to lock it out. All right. So the interface on here, you lightly press the main switch for momentary, click it all the way for constant on, and then that mode switch will switch through your different outputs. And you do have a mode memory. So if we leave it off in low or leave it on in low, turn it off, turn it back on, it's going to be in low until we mess with it again. So no matter how many times I hit that main switch, it's always going to be in that low, the memorized one, until we mess with that side switch again. All right, so let's see what we have it in currently. We have it in strobe ready. So if you just press that side switch, you can see you've got momentary of the strobe. If you just keep on holding it for a while and then let it go, you can see you still have momentary. One nice thing that they did, I can't remember if they did this on the P-Series lights where they had the, uh, the they used the dual switch in the past, is this one, double click and it'll go straight into max output. So you double click that side switch, that mode switch, and it'll go straight into max output. So it's kind of cool. So from off, you have instant access to whatever mem memorized mode you had, whatever you had it in last, and then you double click it and you can go straight into the max output. So let's get it into the, let's get it into low. All right, got it in low, so we got instant access to that. 
double click it for the max output, and then you still have your instant access to load. Pretty cool. And you can also obviously change your memorize mode to something else if you want to do that. And then you've got the instant access obviously to the strobe as well. Okay, so that is the strobe ready mode, the suppressing light mode, or su man, I already forgot what it said. <laughs> yeah, suppressing light mode, I guess I got it right. It just sounds kind of silly, so I forgot. Uh, they say that you have to remove the battery. I've messed around with this a little bit. I don't think you have to remove the battery completely. I just think you have to loosen the tail cap enough for it to break connection on the inside, on the head end. So I think that battery has to just come off of the head a little bit. This has a serious amount of threads, and they got a couple O-rings in there. Um, so it, you know, it takes a little while to get it off there. You don't have to necessarily have to get it off all the way. I found that if you loosen it about halfway, um, then it's okay. But they say that you have to take the battery out, put it back in. They basically just want you to break all the connections. And then while you're doing that, and yes, this is as awkward as it sounds, you've got to... I'm going to get it most of the way down. Uh, when you have it tightened all the way, you want to press and hold the mode switch and screw it on at the same time. Eh, eh. Keep on tightening until you see some flashing. It's pretty tight there at the end. And then when it flashes once, then we are in the suppressing light mode. So the, pressing, the suppressing light mode just basically reverses what the mode switch does. So when you press and hold that mode switch, it'll go straight into the max output of the 2800 lumens. And then you still have the regular operation with the main switch. And then you can see the mode switch will still go through the other stuff. Accidentally double clicked. But you can see that it, when you double click it, it goes straight into strobe. So it just reverses what that mode switch does. So you've got press and hold for the max output, double click for strobe and then you still have the same operation on that main switch. So kind of need something a little bit different. I don't remember any other manufacturers doing that. Uh, obviously they were not the first one to do this dual switch, but kind of a neat implementation on that. Uh, I kind of like the way that they did that. Pretty cool operation on there. Okay, so that is the Tiny Monster TM03. Let's go over the interface again real quick. Lightly press that main switch. It'll go into max output. Click it all the way for constant on. Press that side switch and it'll cycle through your different outputs. Press and hold the side switch. And depending on which mode you're in, it'll either go into the max output or it'll go into strobe. And then double click and we've got it in strobe now. And then if you add in the other mode, it will go into the uh, uh, max output. And then you got the momentary double click for strobe from off. Okay, so that is the interface and everything of the Tiny Monster TM03. Really cool light. It is really impressive the amount of light that's coming out of this thing. I don't know if it's the, let me, let me read it again. <laughs> the world's most powerful 118650 tactical light. Uh, it's definitely up there, especially for the production manufacturers. It's a really cool light. They did a good job on it. I like the interface. Let's take it outside and we'll show you how it does outside. All right, got the Nightcore TM03 outside. Got the big 40 mag light that I always use as a control. Let's go ahead and try that mag light out first. Tree right there is about 30 feet away. Dock house down there on the lake is about 100 feet away. So there's your mag light. Here is the TM03. We're gonna start on the lower outputs. We'll crank it up, show you what those look like. So you can see there's a ton of light coming out of this thing. Just to show you, it really is that TM03. This light's putting out 2800 lumens on max out output. Pretty crazy amount of light. You got that instant access to the strobe or the max output or both actually, because you can do the, uh, the momentary press or you can do the double click, however you want to have it set up as you saw earlier. But let's zoom in down there on the dock house so you can see a little bit better how well that is lit up. Obviously lit up extremely well and here in just a minute, we're gonna go out to a longer distance and just show you what it looks like at a longer distance. But we'll cycle through. Even on the low one, it's lit up. You can see definitely the tree, but the, uh, the dock house, the lighter part of it lights up pretty well. And then just the second output alone does very, very well at that distance. And then obviously the higher ones do even better. Pretty impressive light for the size, 2800 lumens out of this thing, out of that XHP 70 LED. Compact light, nice interface on there. They did a good job on this. We'll shine it around a little bit, show you some different distances and colors on the different outputs. Okay, let's take it out to, out, out to a uh, longer distance. 
All right, we got some more space to try out that TM03. Let's go ahead and give it a try. We'll start off with straight to max. Boat right there is about 20 feet away. Got a couple targets set up out there. First one is at 50 yards away. Second one there on the left is 100 yards away. And then that sign right there is about 60 yards away. And then the tree line beyond is about 130 yards away. So you can see it lights all of that up really, really well. Ton of lumens coming out of this thing. Very usable hotspot in terms of the size. Very usable spill in terms of the brightness and the size. Let's zoom back out and then we'll show you the other outputs just so you can see what those look like. Cycle through those real quick. And even on that low, you can see it makes it out to 20 feet really well. Sort of makes it out to 50 yards, not really, but then you can crank it up and obviously get out there just fine or extremely well. <laughs> Very cool light. I was impressed by it when they first announced it. I was kind of like, eh, you know, we've seen a bunch of lights like this similarly lately. But uh, then we got them in and I was really, really impressed. Uh, I kind of expected it to be a lot larger than it actually is. So the amount of lumens coming out of this thing, considering the size, is very, very impressive. So there you go. That is the Nightcore Tiny Monster TM03. If you like it, you can buy it from me at goinggear.com. Any questions or comments, you can reach me in the comments or any of my guys at goinggear.com. As always, get going and start something. Thanks for watching.